Archbase distros are kind of a dime a dozen. There are literal tons of these distributions out there, and for the most part, we all have to question why they even exist, because they really are, again, for the most part, kind of clones of each other. They all use the Calamari's installer, they all have maybe some form of customization, and they all claim to be the easy way to install Arch Linux. So, when it comes to a new Arch-based distro that I've never heard of before, I'm really not that interested in it, because, like I said, there's just so many of them, and very few of them bring anything excellent to the table. So, I usually just bypass them. But one distribution that has gotten a lot of attention recently is called Zero Linux. So, when I saw other YouTubers taking a look at this, and they all seemed to like it, I was like, well... Obviously, something has to be pretty special about it, so I might as well look at it, too. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at Zero Linux, the KDE version. Now, apparently, they used to have an XFCE version, but they don't anymore, so it's just the KDE version. But the thing is still called the KDE version. It's a little confusing, but anyways, that's what we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at their website. Now, their website is fairly well designed, and anyone who has watched the channel for any amount of time knows that I very often judge a distribution by the website, because if the developer can't be bothered to design a fairly good website, at least in terms of information and all this stuff, then chances are they didn't do a very good job on their distribution either, because, I mean, that doesn't always hold true. Obviously, sometimes they do, they're just really crap at creating documentation or doing a website at all, and they just use SourceForge, and that's fine, and they still have a good distribution uh, sometimes, but I found that over the years that if the distribution has a crap website or no website at all, it usually corresponds into lack of effort in their distribution as well, but in this case, we have a very nice website with some certain sections. So we have a reason why it was created, so this developer has created it basically for themselves, in which case I have to say, at least what I've seen so far, in terms of going through this before I started recording, they've done a really good job of making this very uh, user agnostic, because a lot of times when you see a distribution that has been created for the developer, for themselves, you'll see a distribution that just ha just comes with a ton of different stuff on there that most people aren't ever going to use. And while there's some of that stuff that's pre-installed on Zero Linux, for the most part, you don't get the sense that this just has a ton of cruft that that, that person really likes and uh, really wouldn't be ap applicable to anybody else. Now, this is what the developer says about their KDE version. The This is Zero Linux KDE offers a wide variety of packages to choose from during install, not to mention the level of customization that KDE brings with it. It offers freedom of choice. It also has some cool standalone rices that you will be able to install with minimal effort as well as the Zero Linux tool and much more. So here are the rices that they're talking about. So they've done a lot of customization for both KDE and Grub itself. So it's actually kind of cool. Now, one thing that I probably won't be able to show you is the alternate Grub themes because I could not get that to work in a virtual machine. I'm assuming it has something to do with the KVM stuff. Uh, sometimes that doesn't play well with Grub, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work. It's possible that it works this time, but it didn't work the last time. But anyways, so this is the first rice they have. This is the default one, as we'll see. It uses two latte docs, one at the bottom, one at the top. This one here is the Dracula themed rice. Some conkies and some more latte docs. This one here is Nord. Basically the same thing, just the Nord color scheme. And this one has the candy icons that they call the sweet icons. Kind of like what Garuda has. Alright, anyways. Uh, this is the Grub themes. We have Nord. I believe that's the default one. Uh, this is the Star Wars one. Pretty cool. Daft Punk, Tron, and Zero Compromise. So, anyways, that's basically what the website has in terms of everything else. They have a forum that you can you can visit, which is great for I mean, the fact that this person has created the distribution for themselves, but has still put in some effort into creating some support system. It's actually really good. So let's go ahead and install this thing. Let's go to our virtual machine here and see if we can install this thing. So the first thing you'll notice is that you'll get this Zero Linux welcome screen. So I actually really like this welcome screen because it's not overly complicated. A lot of times when you see welcome screens, they're trying to be dual purpose. They're trying to be very informative prior to your installation and they're supposed to be informative after your installation. So they try to 
try to meld both of those situations and they don't always do a good job. With this, you can tell this is meant for pre-installation and there's not a lot to it. There's four buttons. You, if you're having problems, you can do this debug mode. I'm assuming this will probably open up a terminal so you can while it's installing so you can see any errors that pop up. This is the regular installer button. If you're running VMware, you can click this button. It will try to fix the resolution. And then you can also launch the partition manager, which is going to be uh, GNOME disks, which is actually a really good selection because it's not as complicated as either Gparted or the KDE partition manager or whatever it's called. So we're not going to deal with any of those. We're just going to go ahead and hit start zero Linux installer. What we'll see here is the Calamari's installer and we'll make this full screen so that the dot goes away. And then we'll go ahead and hit next. American English is fine. So here are the two places where this installer does things a little bit differently. So sim similar to what you'd expect in something like Arco, you have some choices here that you'll need to make prior to installation on what you're going to install. So on this first page, this is the system level core stuff. So we're talking what kernel you want, the processor you code, which login manager you want, if you want certain graphics drivers, certain audio drivers, power management stuff for laptops, printing support, and the fingerprint driver. So all that stuff is right here on the first page. For the most part, it's fairly easy to parse. So if you have an Intel GPU, you would select the Intel one. If you have an AMD GPU, you would select that one and so on and so forth. I'm going to leave this just exactly the way it is. There's none of this other stuff that I actually need. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now this one here is a little bit more in depth. So Unlike Arco, where you just have page after page of categories of, of applications that you can install, this one here puts it all on one page. Now, I'm not sure which way is better, because on one hand, if you open up several of these trees, you can see that this can get messy quite fast, and then you have to start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So if you don't close this stuff after you're done with it, you're gonna by the time you get to the last category, you're going to have to scroll quite far. On the other hand, you don't have to go page after page of categories. So, because chances are you're not going to open up every single one of these categories. Uh, so, it's perhaps it's not that big of a deal that it's all on one page. Like I said, I'm not sure which way I prefer. Uh, they both have their merits. So, the one thing that I will say here is that if there's something that you want installed that you don't want to have to install afterwards, you should install it here. Because one of the things that you'll notice and one of the things that we'll talk about once we get this installed is that by default, if you don't select anything here, the application base that you get is quite small. So, you do get a browser, but it's Falcon. You do get, obviously, most of the KDE stuff, but outside of that you're not going to have a lot of stuff there. So you're going to end up having to download some of the stuff anyway. So I highly recommend going through each of these categories, finding the stuff that you want, and then going go ahead and install that. For me personally, I'm going to go, go ahead and leave all this stuff blank because I want to show you exactly what's installed by default without making any changes. But that's not the expected behavior. The expected behavior here is for you to select the applications that you want and it'll install them prior to installation or during installation. So again, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. That's a proper time zone. That's a proper keyboard layout. And here's another place where it's a little bit different. So most Arch-based distributions tend to default TXT4. Most Linux distributions tend to default TXT4 too. But this one defaults to ButterFS. I like that choice because ButterFS is amazing. And it's one of those things like if you choose Butterfest and you never even use the features, you can still just be perfectly happy with your system. It's not going to be a big deal at all. But if you have it installed that way and you happen to install an update that goes wonky, uh, you can use the snapshot system to roll back a little bit. So that's a nice feature. And it's one that I prefer. I personally think that Butterfest should be default for everything nowadays, but I know I'm basically in the minority for that. I know a lot of people still like ext4. But anyways, no swap. We're not going to do that this time. You do have the option to encrypt the system. Some of the distributions I've seen recently have removed that for whatever reason, uh, but that's here. We'll hit next. We'll enter our credentials and enter a very complicated password. We'll use it for the administrator account too. Hit next and hit install and then install now. Now I will cut the video here. When it's done installing, we'll come back. Okay, now that we're done there, we'll go ahead and restart the system. That installation took maybe seven minutes or so. But let's go ahead and hit restart here. 
we'll get the usual wall of text. This is the boot screen by default. And we'll go ahead and hit enter there. And then we're going to see what I believe is SDDM for Display Manager. And you'll see that it doesn't really like this resolution all that much. You got some design issues here, but that's a VM issue. So we're not going to hold anything against the developer there. For whatever reason, Vert Manager just defaults to this resolution. It has something to do with the video driver. I'm not sure how to fix it. I usually just go in afterwards and fix that display. So when that's actually what I'm going to do here. I'm going to open up the display settings right here and then uh, choose 1920 by 1080, which is right there, apply, and then keep. And then we can close that. So this right here is the Zero Linux configuration tool. Now, just like the welcome screen, during the installation. This is very simple. There's not a lot of stuff here and I like that. They haven't made it overly complicated. They've just put in things that they think that people will find useful. So for example, the if you need NVIDIA graphics card drivers, this is where you would install them. Because if you notice during the installation, there wasn't actually an option for the NVIDIA card drivers. Uh, there was Optimus stuff there, but for NVIDIA stuff, there wasn't anything there. So this is where you do that. You can also change the default shell from here. So you can switch to ZSH, which they will install OM OMZSH and uh, Power Level 10,000 if you do that. And you can also revert back to Bash if you've switched to ZSH in the, pre in the previous step here. Uh, but we won't do that. You can configure Samba from here. You, you can install KVM and QEMU for virtualization. Uh, I'm not sure what this coming soon button is. I'm very curious as to what's coming next. Uh, you can disable auto start, which is going to be, I believe, to keep this thing from auto starting. And then you can see what extra packages. So the extra packages include uh, the Surface kernel for um, what is, I'm assuming the Microsoft Surface. You can install the KDE window tiling. I'm assuming, again, that this is bismuth. So we're actually going to go ahead and do that. Uh, that went away way too quick, so I'm not actually sure what they installed there so uh, we'll have to see later on if we have the tiling stuff installed uh, you can also inst install uh, doom emacs here and the aio and ins gaming aio installers so interesting that they put doom emacs here as an option definitely i know now why this has caught uh, dt's attention because anyone who prior prioritizes doom emacs uh, is going to get some attention there so that is the configuration tool in terms of what it does. And like I said, I like that it is simple. There's not a lot of stuff here. Now, I would say I would love it if they put the grub configuration and the ricing tool here as well. I'm not actually sure why they're not here. Like the the rice the grub tool is here at the bottom. It's in the dock, but it's not here. But again, it's not that big of a deal. It's just something that I noticed. So we'll get out of that. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the Zero Linux system tool let's take a look at the rest of the system so the first thing we'll notice is that there's a dock along the bottom so these are both latte docks and they're very simple interestingly they don't have a lot of standard applications that are you know usually docked down here we do have console and dolphin docked we also have an icon here for firefox but firefox isn't installed unless you choose it during installation you have Cavantum, you have the system settings you have GNOME Disks, which is their default partition manager that they install, and they have the Grub Customizer. And then they have a, a Present Windows button, which it will, if you have multiple windows open, will do uh, this thing here, kind of like Expose or whatever it's called. And you'll see here that this is the theme that they have installed by default. And they do have animations here, and the animations do work in a virtual machine, which is actually kind of cool. The other thing that you'll notice is that there is no browser actually docked down here. So by default, the browser that they have installed is Falcon. So this is the KDE browser. Uh, I'm actually not sure of anyone who actually uses Falcon. I'm sure that I'll get someone in the comments below who says, oh, I use Falcon. Uh, if you do use Falcon, I'd love to hear from you because I'd love to know why you've chosen Falcon. But anyways, let's take a look at the what's installed by default so we have some development tools here both mostly stuff for Qt and kde itself for graphics we have gwenview and k color chooser we have some internet stuff which is falcon and the kde connect tools we have for multimedia we have some more cute stuff again no media player whatsoever uh, for office we have calendar and localize for, and then we have system settings 
uh, system tools and utilities. All that stuff is, for the most part, standard KDE fare. So the only things that I see that are non-KDE stuff are is basically Latte, which they've installed, obviously, because we, we're using that. We have the Emoji Selector, which I actually think is now default in KDE. I'm not sh sure. I don't remember. The Cavantum, which isn't usually installed by default in like stock KDE, but is very common. Interestingly, they have Thunar here installed by default. I'm not sure why they have Thunar installed by default because we also have Dolphin here. So as much as I like file managers, you don't really need two of them. But again, they do have two of them here by default. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's not that it's a big deal. It's just something that I noticed. It's the only application I saw that they have like two versions of, like application category of. Uh, they have a GR sync that they, they've installed. So this is a front end for our sync. They have LSHW which I believe is like a hardware manager. So you can manage some of your hardware. They have uh, Uquake or Quake, Quakey, however the hell you pronounce that thing for the drop-down terminal, which again, isn't def usually installed by default, but it is in this case. The only custom thing other than the Zero Linux system tool that I've found is the Scrub Customizer. So we'll actually go into this. And I will say one thing about this is that this is not a intuitive application from what I can see. So this first pane here will let you choose what entries you have in Grub. So if you have multiple partitions with different distros or windows or whatever, you can manage that stuff from here. From general settings, this will t allow you to change the delay between Grub showing up and it automatically choosing an option for you, which is kind of cool, something that... I've always wanted to kind of uh, change, but never really looked into how to do. And then we have the appearance setting. And this is where it gets a little more complicated because each part of the grub stuff is, is seems to be a part of uh, this list here. So, so this grub theme here is the default one. And then it has all of these components as far as I'm aware. Zero Linux does have one other grub option here. And it actually looks like it's going to be okay this time if we hit save yeah it worked this time the last time it didn't work i got an error i wish i'd taken a picture of it but yeah it worked that time so one thing you'll notice that is missing at least so far is that if we go back to the website you'll see that they have all these options for different grub themes they're not installed by default so if you want the daft punk one you'd go to this installation guide it would take you to a github page and it would tell you how to install that particular grub theme and the same for all the other grub themes that they've created now the other thing that i found was missing because i spent a good 10 minutes looking for options to change to those rising because the whole purpose of the zero linux thing this whole distro was to be eye candy and have multiple rices available for you so if you again go back to the website you'll see that if you choose like this one here is the default but if you choose, say you wanted the dracula one Again, you have this installation guide that you click on and you would then clone the repo or get from the AUR and you'd install it that way. So again, not included by default. So the main purpose of this existing, at least from what the website says outside of, I mean, the, the developer says they created it for themselves. So if this is the way they want it, that's perfectly fine. But if you're using this and you see those themes, my expectation would be that they'd be installed by default, but they're not. So that's one thing that you'll have to keep in mind if you decide to use this. If you want those other themes, you'll have to install them yourself. Taking a look at the NeoFetch, so we'll go ahead and, and make this bigger. It does have its own custom ASCII art. This is using Bash 5.1.6. Now, they're going to remember this is Arch Linux, so we're going to expect the most advanced, most recent versions of everything. So we have... Linux kernel 5.17.4, Plasma 5.24.4, and we have about 1,273 packages by default. Now, I've noticed when you click on stuff, things get a little wonky. I'm pretty sure that's a console thing, but it just happens. And we also have the I use Arch, by the way, up here, which is uh, kind of a neat addition. So we can do this, although we have opened up other stuff. Okay, so they have free to, free alias, so just type free using about a, a gigabyte of RAM. But again, I've opened up other stuff, so it's possible that there's stuff running. I'm not sure what it would be at idle. And uh, we can do a uname, but we don't really need to do that again. And now it's time to answer the question, why does this exist? So I'm actually going to change that question just a little bit. Why is it getting so much attention? Because every YouTuber that do does Linux content like this 
has covered Zero Linux. And the thing is, is I don't get it. Like, it's not bad. Like, it's actually really good. I enjoyed the installer a lot. Like, like I said, during the install, I'm not sure which way of doing the multiple, like, application selector is better, either one page or multiple pages. But it's definitely cleaner this way, at least in some ways. And I enjoyed that. And I like how minimal it is. Like, you have the option to basically build up your entire system from that install process. You can choose all the applications that you want to install right there, and that's kind of cool, but it's not unique, right? It's not something that is unique to Zero Linux. Many different distributions do this, especially on the Arch side. So, for example, Garuda by default is fairly minimal, and you install most of the stuff that you want installed afterwards. Now, they do have, Garuda does have a lot more base applications installed, so you get Firefox, you get the media players and stuff like that. So, this is more minimal than that, but you kind of get the point is that Almost every Arch-based distro gives you those options. So I'm not sure why that would be something that caught a lot of people's eye. The welcome screens were nice. Again, I liked that they're more minimal and they're not convoluted and complicated. But again, not anything special. The one thing that supposedly makes this special is those rices. And again, they're not included by default. So... Taking a look at them would require, you know, actually installing them and giving them a try that way. Okay, so I actually paused the video there and went and installed the Dracula Rice. So I'm going to go back to this and you'll see it installed a different grub theme. And we'll see how the display manager changed. It did not. So we'll, we'll change into this. Now, all it entailed was copying one line off from the GitHub page. So this is, it's, I'm not complaining that the process is hard. I'm not complaining that the, that it, like that at all. Like, it's not hard at all. Anyone can run a git command off from GitHub and get to this exact point. My point what earlier was that the point of it existing, or at least the thing that they advertise on their website... Uh, isn't included by default, which is, I found a little bit weird. But outside of that, this is what the Dracula theme looks like. It's nice, right? It has multiple latte docs. It has a dock down here at the bottom. It uses the same menu system. It has the application menu up there at the top. So it's nice. The, I don't know why the conkeys disappeared. I'm assuming there's like maybe a key binding to bring them back. I'm not sure. They were there for like a second, but they're not there anymore. But anyways, that's the Dracula Weiss. And like I said, it wasn't hard. It was just a matter of running uh, this one command. Here, git clone, then this URL, and then it CD'd into the directory, and then it ran the install script. Personally, I would say it would be better just to include some kind of tool to change the rice. There's not... Oh, I mean, honestly, just include it in Cavantum because most of the stuff, I mean, it's using the same icons from what I can tell. It just looks like they've applied a Cavantum theme to me. They changed the Git theme as well or the Grub theme as well. So maybe that is what they're doing. But other than that, there has to be more. I looked at the script and they do do more stuff in the script. But most of the stuff that it installed was already installed in the default system. So it was a little, like I said, it's a little weird. And that was my point, is that I'm not sure why it's gotten so much, like, enthusiasm in the community. Like, it's not bad or anything, it's just uh, yet another Arch-based distribution. So, I'm going to stop being so negative. Because, it's not like I said, it's not it's not bad. I don't know why I was so negative today. It's good, you should try it out. Anyways, if you have comments on Zero Links, you can leave those in the comment section below. Chances are, maybe there's something that I missed that it makes this more special than what I, what I see in front of my face. It's always, always possible. I, I only spent about 20 minutes with it, so it's it's possible that I just missed something. So leave those comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Abdul, Steve A, Subregular Linux, Garrett, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Marnie, Roth, Eduardo, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Benedict, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.